you know, I'm pleased to say to you and to all of Barbados that um, Barbados has um, a cadre. I mean, we, we have um, some very young, able-bodied, um, competent police officers that I do not see now at the immediate short or, or rather even maybe in some ways the long term but you never know about the future but certainly the, the short to medium term I, I don't see um, any reason for us to consider looking outside of Barbados um, for management in a, in a Royal Barbados Police Force there there are so many officers that I can think about that um, that have the, the requisite competencies and and um, you know and we're we're actually in a, in a very good place in that regard well how close are we to Finding replacements because he's gone, the deputy is that's gone. Not, the that's top. not that's not my area. You know? mm -hmm. um, there's a police service commission who addresses that. Not that I'm convening a meeting of of the of my people somewhere towards the end of this month to actually examine it mm -hmm. and and make a determination as to whether or not given we're not under our laws that that in fact that that's rare that we, that we can do it legally. Mm -hmm. I am one who I'm, I'm all in favor of, of going the route, going the civil forfeiture route. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I need to ensure, we need to ensure as a jurisdiction that it, that it is indeed constitutional and, and that we're not in breach of, you know, of any of our laws. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we will sit down and examine that. Um, the U.S. Um, does have an advisor whose name wouldn't come into my head, um, who who's in fact will, will also sit down with us mm -hmm. um, and, and examine, examine um, draft legislation and look to see what the OECS have, have done, um, look at their model, um, because that's why he highlighted the fact that it has worked in St. Vincent, mm -hmm. which, is one of the, which is one of the territories that adopted their draft legislation. I want to mention several discussions that we've had uh, with the Attorney General, and he just mentioned it, uh, as a matter of fact, to implement a vigorous program of civil asset forfeiture in Barbados. There was a recent uh, major conviction in St. Vincent, uh, that was upheld by subsequent higher court rulings in relations that has established an important precedent that is, is, is indeed legal in the Eastern Caribbean to civilly seize the illegal proceeds of drug cane kingpins and to use those ill-gotten gains against them in the fight against transnational crime. It's a very, very important case, and we think that uh, it... Uh, could have tremendous import on the future uh, in fighting uh, drug trafficking. Um, but more than, more than anything, I just want to say today and mention and reiterate to the uh, minister that we stand ready in the coming years, and when I say we, the government of the United States, to do all we can to support Barbados in seizing the assets of drug cartels and putting these proceeds to use for law enforcement, for prosecutors, for drug abuse prevention, and drug well, It provides $125,000 to help deepen the professional skills of Barbados law enforcement, including purchase of equipment, training, and the mentoring of Barbados personnel by their U.S. government counterparts. In the area of rule of law and anti-corruption, we'll be devoting uh, slightly under $150,000, about $150,000, to expand the capabilities of Barbados uh, as, the, as the minister mentioned, to operate prisons and correctional, correctional centers that are safe, that are secure, that are humane and in conformance with international standards. We will offer our assistance to enhance the knowledge, skills, and abilities of corrections officials to effectively manage a system that contributes to public safety, that combats international, transnational crime, uh, reduces recidivism, and provide the prisoners with opportunities for reform and rehabilitation. We're also devoting an additional $130,000 towards strengthening counter-narcotics controls capabilities in Barbados. Under this program, the U.S. will continue to offer training and equipment to enhance the ability of law enforcement to conduct investigations and interdict illegal trafficking. Now, a fourth, a an area, of, a fourth area of cooperation as outlined in this amended letter that we're signing today, is uh, to combat money laundering and financial crimes, uh, white collar crime, basically. We will be devoting an additional $60,000 in new funding to increase the training 
and technical assistance, mentoring, and equipment for financial and tech intelligence units, what we call FIUs, uh, to also to help the judiciary, the prosecutors, and the banks, and the other regulatory bodies. Uh, but this is, this is only one of a number of areas that I talked about that we are partnering with Barbados, and I can tell you today that we're making a difference. Um, but I can, I can speak for myself as Attorney General that, that indeed that the whole issue of civil forfeiture is one area that, that I would like to see us as, as a country um, move towards because I am slightly upset, to put it politely, um, that you can be driving along and you can hear that uh, that, that vehicle belongs to so and so and, and that, that in fact that, you know, that he may be part of, it may be proceeds of, of crime and, 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 the, and the fact that because there's no criminal conviction um, he and she may be able to drive along um, nicely in, in, in his or her community. There's, there's something wrong with that, with, with that picture. And I, don't, I do not believe that anyone should be allowed um, to live in this country and display um, the ill-gotten gains without us using whatever apparatus that we have at our disposal, within our laws, of course, um, to ensure that, that that does not happen because it does send the wrong signal um, to, the rest of the, to the rest of the community.